Look at that load, man. Remember, these are 12 meter locks too, so that's heavy. Just twist them right on in there. Yeah, I, I think I'm sold. <laughs> I really like this. Welcome back everybody to Farming Simulator 22 on the Silver Run Force map. I'm an old guy gaming. And I am just about at the end of my next uh, run here with the yarder. As you can see, I got a big old trail of logs behind me there. Um, so the plan for this episode is we're going to do a few things. Uh, as you can see, I'm up to $353,000. I've sold a few containers uh, since I left you in the last episode and made quite a bit of progress here logging the property, as you can see. Um, I want to do a couple things in this episode. I want to get the uh, I want to try the big claw loader big Volvo claw loader thingy um, this thing right here the high lift loader um, and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lease it first to see if I like it better than you know the claw that I'm using on the front loader before I commit to actually purchasing it uh, so we're gonna do we're gonna try that out to load these logs um, I don't think I've mentioned this to you guys, but I really like this Rotney um, loader. I, I've I've played around with it a little bit on on a test save, and I want to get uh, I want to ultimately get this. This is probably going to be our ultimate harvester. The one thing I I don't mind my setup now. It works pretty good, but the the auto align thing doesn't work with it. Um, so I'm pressing and holding O, and it won't it won't auto align it. Uh, plus, the Rodney is going to be, you know, faster, probably twice the speed of this. And so I want to eventually get to that. And that's not necessarily going to happen right away, but i just let you know it's one of the items on my, my wish list here. Uh, the other big thing I want to accomplish in this episode is I want to get the sawmill purchased um, so that we own that. And then, you know, kind of go from there. Um, I was going to take you guys up to... Well, no, I am going to actually take you up to the iron mine. We're going to get a load of, of metal and take our first load of metal over to the roller coaster. Um, but I was going to see if I could get the conveyor system to work at the iron mine. And, and I and I can do that. It does work. It's just that the iron mine is chocked full of ore right now. So I'm going to let that, you know, run down a bit before, you know, get it almost all the way down before we switch over to using... The conveyor system but it does work and it works quite well but as you can see this thing is chocked full um and i have quite a bit of metal um that's is is sitting out waiting to be picked up so the 256 is not there uh not what all, all we have we have a lot more i also have the old front loader back up at the iron mine and it is uh and i got those forks for it and we'll use that to load the pallets i'll probably eventually just distribute them but for the first few times anyways, um, I'm planning on loading them by hand just to kind of get the full experience. Okay, the other thing is I, I've gone back to working with 12 meter long containers. I haven't really noticed a significant difference in, uh, you know, working with 9 meter logs versus 12 meter logs. And... It seems to me to be more or less about the you know same amount of time to to do one over the other, and of course we get more money from the 12 meter uh, containers. It, it averages out to be around a hundred thousand each time, depending upon you know how what types of trees that you have in in the thing. So anyway, what I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish just this little section of trees, you know that's around the yarder cable. So kind of everything you see here and then I'm gonna sleep because it's getting late in the day and tomorrow morning I'll bring you guys back we'll get that high lift loader we'll yard some logs to the landing and try that out and do a, a load another, another container load and then we will go down to the sawmill and we will purchase it I also need to stop by the paper mill too and grab our log trailer that, that's sitting down there with some extra logs and bring that back because then we're going to want to load that up for the sawmill. I don't think 
I don't know if you can or if you should even should use containers when you're delivering to to your own sawmill. Um, I don't see the point in doing that, so I'm I'm just going to use the normal log trailer for that, and then we'll we'll try out again the high lift loader to load the log trailer and see how that goes. All right, guys. So I will see you tomorrow morning, and we'll go from there. Ah, uh, what a glorious October first morning it is, and uh, welcome back everybody to October. Okay, so let's see here. Um, I um I ended up parking my Flegel logging trailer with the crane here. I was using it for the, oh, you know what? We could actually use this for the, yeah, we could use this to, to take to the lumber mill. Um, I was having trouble getting it to fit underneath the loading area in the paper mill. You had to have this crane like all the way down. And if, you know, if I, I got to think, well, if I bring a full load of logs, I'm not going to uh, be able to put the crane all the way down. It's not going to fit in there. So I went ahead and purchased a, a normal logging trailer well i think i leased it excuse me uh and have that down there with a few logs left over in it so um we need to in fact here let's take a look at the at the paper mill right at the moment okay so yeah it's got um it, it still has quite a bit in there probably based upon the number of logs that i have left sitting on the trailer probably not enough to completely empty it so we'll have to run by there later and deal with that but we should be able to actually use this trailer for our first load to the lumber mill once we buy it. Okay, so let's hop into Gator. Um, there's not a whole lot of point in leasing the overhead high loader thingy until we have some logs yarded up to the landing. So that's the first thing we're going to do is go back to the logging camp and yard some logs over so we can get that other 12-foot container loaded. We'll sell that. That'll get us another $100,000-ish. And then we will um, do the next thing, which is going to be uh, to purchase the lumber mill. And then we're going to run up to the iron mine, grab a load of iron. I already sent the second semi truck up there with the flatbed, so he's just waiting up there uh, for us to come up there and load. And we'll drop that off and at the roller coaster. Uh, before I started the camera, I had run down to a. Uh, the waffle house there and got myself some bacon and eggs and waffles for breakfast so <laughs> that's taken care of um oh yeah here's another thing i purchased this gooseneck trailer this is a mod um because it's it's fair, fairly low fairly good size relatively cheap and that's what we're going to use to haul in our scrap wood uh, scrap wood and dead wood to the paper mill and it's already full we might even have to get like a couple of those we'll see how that goes Okay, so let's park the gator over here. Um, yeah, I'm going to park the gator over here. We're going to take the tractor with us um, over by the logs because we might need it to pull some logs around and stuff. Um, there's a lot of brush over here. I'm wondering if maybe in the future it would behoove me to... Whoops. To try and go through and clear out some of the underbrush before I start logging... Um, because what, you know, when you get down in the brush on foot, you can't see anything. So it's a bit of a pain in the neck. All right. So these first, this first group of logs is really close. Um, uh, so let's get those going first. The yarder should be ready to go. So let's call it over here. Here it comes. And uh, we're only going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, we're only going to select the 12 meter logs for now. And then I'll come back later on and get the 6 meter logs and the scrap logs and the dead wood. Uh, but for now, we're just going to start with the 12s. Okay, so let's hook you up there and you up there. And you probably can't take another one because of how heavy they are. <clears throat> heavy they are. So we'll yard those back first. Let's see, is this a 12? No, that's only a 6 meter. Okay, let's just put that aside for now. Uh, that's a 12. Here, let's drop the logs off. And bring that back over here. And that's a 12, and this is a 12 over here. What we might need to do, though, is... Yeah, this one's kind of far away, so let's... 
let's push that one over with the tractor so we can hopefully get all three of them um here stay put there we go you can't control the yarder when you're in a vehicle there that should work assuming it can take I think it'll be able to take all three of those which we're gonna find out in a second aren't we nope too heavy okay well then take these back these are all six meters here so we'll just yard this one um, by itself and then we'll get the next group there Yeah, I've tried, I've tried the high loader just for a couple of lifts on um, on a test save, but I haven't really used it enough to to tell if if I'm going to like it more, you know, than than our current solution, which is working pretty good. Uh, but I want to at least give the high loader a try, and I might ultimately like, you know, just the the wheel loader with the big claw, but we'll see. We shall see. Okay, now let's see if we can kind of bunch these little guys up together so they'll be easy to get when the time comes. Or at least push them out of the way of the main path. Okay, drop off the logs and come on back, carriage. There were fewer uh, spruce logs in this batch than there were in my first batch. So I'm hoping that we'll make a little more money this time around. It, it's a shame, I think, that the spruce logs are so uh, less valuable than the other ones. Um, I don't know. I mean, maybe spruce is just a cheaper wood in general, but it seems like it's it's a little too um, too much. Can we get this one, maybe? Nope. Okay. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I keep forgetting. These are 12-meter logs, so these suckers are heavy. Can we kind of shove this stuff out of the way a little bit, too, just so it doesn't get all thrown all over the place? That one's too heavy to pick up, but these I can. Whoop. Come on, man. Here, could even do this. Seems a little counterintuitive or yarding it the wrong way, but... Okay. Let's just push that log real quick. There we go. Okay. So, guys, I'm going to um, just keep at this, and when I feel like we have enough logs... Uh, up to the landing to get a full container uh, we will go down to the store and we will lease the top the high loader big loader high loader I think that's what's called right and give it a try so I will bring you back here in just a little while all right guys I'm back um, we're gonna send one more log up to the landing and then I think we'll have enough for a full container's worth. Um, these ones are a little far away. Let's see if we can grab it from here. I have been having a little bit of trouble with some of the heavier logs slipping the... Yeah, like that. They uh, are right on the borderline of what the yarder can handle. So let's try this again.
Yep, did it again. Okay. So we'll just keep trying to get it over there. Um, this is maybe a good argument for for not doing the the 12 meter lengths because <laughs> I didn't have this problem, um, you know, with the with the shorter lengths. Okay, it seems to be doing it a little bit better there. We have we have a couple along the way that we got to pick back up here too. Um, there's no way it's going to pick both of those up. Yeah, I didn't think so. I I was just, you know, as I've been doing this, I'm reminded once again how dangerous this job is. <laughs> With those logs being, you know, those big logs being pulled and you're in the brush and you can't see very well. Um, you could definitely get hurt, if not worse pretty easily doing this kind of work you have to I'm sure I mean I've never done real yarding before but you have to I'm sure you have to really think about you know how the logs gonna be pulled and what it's gonna do you know once the the cable starts pulling on it and making sure you're out of the way and that sort of thing pretty crazy man pretty fun though I'm really enjoying this all right, I think what we'll do now is, oh, it looks like we have a couple more stragglers. We got to get a little closer. Of course, that one's close enough we could grab it with the loader. The other thing, too, is, you know, I'm doing this by myself. <clears throat> In a real world situation, you would have, I'm sure you would have at least one other person on this end of the yarder, you know, kind of managing the logs so they didn't just end up in a big tangled mess there. But of course, that's not really possible for me to do. I mean, it. What I could do is I could teleport. Be oh, see now that would <laughs> that would have just taken me out in real life. Um, I guess what I could do is have a, like a tractor or a vehicle at each end, and then I could just teleport and then kind of manage it and then come back. I suppose that would work. Maybe we should do that. We could put the we could put the Volvo tractor on the yarder end and then have the big tractor on this end. And then, you know, send a group of logs over to teleport to the Volvo, kind of straighten them out, and then teleport back to the other tractor and wash, rinse, repeat. That might be a better way to handle this, because, yeah, we just got a mess here now. Okay, anyway, let's go ahead and go down to the store. Um, I don't have an available low boy, so we're going to Uber to the store, and then we'll just drive the high loader back. Not ideal, but I don't want to lease another low boy just just for that it's not that far all right so let's go into here we'll call an uber and we will have the uber driver take us to the store there we go and now what we're going to do is we are going to lease the big high loader try this sucker out and see how how well we like it High lift. I don't know why I always get that name wrong. Okay, we want, yeah, we want the safety frames. We want a safety beacon. What is, okay, so that's design two. I don't know what that's changing. Oh, it is. Okay, yeah, it's putting a light down here instead of up here. I see what's going on. Okay, I actually like the ones that are up higher. Okay, so yeah, that's it. This is a whopping three hundred eighty-four thousand and two hundred dollars to buy this. But like I said, we're just gonna lease it for now. And you know, I always have the lease to own option. If I like it, then we'll just keep hang on to it and and buy it probably. Look at that machine, man. That thing is cool. Okay, so I would imagine inside this is going to be just like um, our wheel loader. Oh, my uh, head tractor is getting a little weird. There we go. I think my mic stand was in the way. Yeah, it looks exactly like the wheel loader on the inside and on the outside, except for, of course, the big enormous claw that it has on it. Very cool. It's even got like a, a little grate in front just to keep logs from smashing through the windshield. Very cool. All right. So, yeah, let's drive this thing back down to our 
our logging site and we'll give it a try loading that 12, uh, 12, whoa, 12 uh, meter container. I think I'll stay on the inside because this thing's loud. <laughs> All right, we are here. give this thing a try so we're gonna want to get some of these logs over here first since they're sort of in the way that's actually a, a pretty good view there for really seeing what's going on okay so let's open it up down far enough. Okay. Okay, bring that down that way. Back up just a little bit. Okay, now a clamp. The cool thing about this too is it's got those little other claw thingies. Uh, whoops right there that help hold the logs in place so that's neat figured I'd just drive up over the top of that but so that feature alone is actually really nice because it's you know, holding those logs in place. Can we get this one in from here? Yeah. Okay, I'm liking that. I'm liking that. We have our friend the duck quack back. Uh, let's, I guess let's grab this one from over here. Put some lights on too. Really cool, man. You know what? I want to adjust something here real quick with my crane controls. The raise crane arm to, okay. I want to swap these. Well, wait a second. Oh, no, not those, these. Yeah, okay. So that's Y minus. Let's make that Y plus. Whoops. There. Yeah, that feels more natural. It's kind of aircraft control idea. Mm, yeah, I'm liking this, man. I'm really liking the those those clamp things that help hold the logs in. Okay, can we use this also to shove? Let's try that. I mean, I'm sure we can, but how effective can we? If we have it open and we just have it down like that. Yeah, so it starts to, well, 
It sort of works. It's not ideal. Would it work better if this was closed? And maybe even turn this way. Yeah, I mean, it works. It's not... It's not pretty, <laughs> but it works. Okay. okay let's back up just a little bit. There we go. Look at that load, man. Remember, these are 12 meter locks too, so that's heavy. Twist them right on in there. That one didn't quite get in there. Yeah, I I think I'm sold. <laughs> I really like this. This works better than I imagined that it would. I mean, I still like my little claw too, or well, I should say my big claw on the wheel loader. I mean, it it works quite well too. But this is this is nice. The main thing I like about this over the claw is those little internal clamp thingies because that's just super effective. All right, so this guy just kind of got in the way, so let's push him back in. Ish. <laughs> Okay, this isn't going to be pretty. Yeah, that, that one log's really sticking out. It's going to be a pain in the butt. Let's go this way Yeah, I might have to I might have to drop this load and re-grab it after pushing it together. I think that's going to make the most sense here. pull that one out because that one's going to cause problems. You also would never stand right in front of a a, a, a winch <laughs> pulling a cable like this either. That'd be super dangerous. That kind of shoves a little bit too actually which is useful. Okay, now... There you go. There you go. Look at that. Beautiful. Well, not beautiful, but decent. <laughs> I don't know if I I don't know if I call it beautiful, but it's pretty decent.
Looks like we had a log that wasn't quite 12 meters. We're getting there. Probably two more logs will do it. Let's grab this little bunch right over here. There we go. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, when I get enough cash built up, I'm going to buy this. Um, I, like I said, I'm sold. This is really nice, you guys. Really nice. Um, actually, I don't want to park it here. I almost have enough cash to buy it now, but I want to get going on the sawmill. So we're going to have to build our money up a little bit more. Very nice. Okay, so let's hop in the truck here and get this load sold. And then we are going to purchase the sawmill. And we got to get up to the iron mine too before the end of this episode all goes according to what I hope we can do in one episode. 44,000 liters of wood. We still have quite a few logs out there too. There's a whole mess of six meter logs. Uh, I definitely have, a, a, with that over there, I definitely have a, at least one six meter container full too. So, you know, that's another 50 grand-ish. One thing I've noticed too, at least from what I've logged so far on this property, there hasn't been a lot of dead trees, not as many as there were on the first property, uh, which of course is a nice thing. Okay, let's just get you over to the mill and get you sold. And actually selling this will give us enough cash to buy the loader, but again, I wanna get the sawmill first because our next load's gonna isn't gonna be the con a container it's gonna go to the sawmill and I'll have to run back up to our original property and get the Fliegel trailer with the crane because we're gonna use that unless the one down at the paper mill can if the mill can take the rest of the logs around it I don't think it can yet but we could run down there and just check it out real quick Ninety-nine thousand seven hundred and sixty-one dollars. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay. So what I want to do is... Okay, let's bring this in. Um... Trying to think what the next best move is. Why don't we send you down to the store and we will get into the gator and run down to the paper mill really quick and see if we can empty that trailer. I think that's what we'll do next. Hey, look at that. We got our first roll of paper. Awesome. Okay. Now, can we empty this the rest of the wood off this trailer? Nope. You know what? Actually, I think it might be pulling it off automatically because there were more logs on there before. Well, we'll just wait then. Uh, we don't need this trailer. Like I said, we can use the Flegel trailer with the crane for our first load to the 
uh, to the sawmill. Okay, cool. Now, let's see, what are, where do I want to do next? Let's, let me look at the map here. I think what we'll do now is we'll run, since we're kind of close to it, let's run up to the iron mine next and get that loaded up. All righty. What we're going to do, okay, those are our metal pallets down there, so we got to get those loaded. So let's park the gator here. I'll have to have Uber bring me back at some point to pick this up. So we have some iron in there, but like I said, I'm not going to, we're going to let the level of the ore run down in the plant there. And then we'll come up here and get a conveyor system set up, which means we don't even need the wheel loader up here. I'm not using this as a wheel loader. I'm using it as a, a pallet, uh, a forklift uh, to lift those pallets because we needed, you know, that up here. Uh, but basically, what we'll do is we'll just set the conveyor belt up here, and it'll automatically just load the trailer for us, and then we just have to run it down and dump it off. Now, it is even possible in a, to uh, set up a chain of conveyor belts and take the ore all the way down to the mine. I, I did get that to work uh, on a test save, too, but it's it's a little clunky, and it blocks the road, so I don't know if we'll actually do that. I just wanted to see if, if it would actually work, and it does, which was cool. Okay, so let's get you... Uh, down here by the pallets. Oh! <laughs> what was that? It scared the bejeebus out of me. <laughs> okay. I'll bet you the game will let us get another pallet on there, but it's not really very realistic, though. So, oh, another one just popped out. Nice. I wonder if that's what happened. I wonder if one tried to pop out, and that's why, <laughs> why it did that. Well, that's hilarious. Okay. So let's just park you right here for the moment. And how are we... Do I have any more ore in here? I've got a little bit of ore in here. Let's just get this dumped off. Yeah, that scared me, man. <laughs> I was like, I'm not expecting that. Okay. That's a little glitchy, man. Look at that. Oh, what the heck? Uh, Houston? All right. Let's try this one more time. If it does that again, we might have to get the other forklift up here. Yeah, this is this is glitchy. Hey, look at that. We got one loaded. Should we dare we try another one? Yep, yeah, no. Nope. <laughs> okay. Um, crap. I guess this, we're not going to be able to use this for this purpose. That's too bad. That was my plan. That means we're going to have to have two forklifts now, one at the store to load containers and one up here for loading iron. Oh, balls. Okay, well... Let's just park this over here then. Hopefully the Giants will fix that at some point. So, all right guys, I'm going to... I guess I'm gonna take the Gator back home. I'm gonna Uber to the store 
buy another one of those forklifts. Well, no, lease another one of those forklifts because they might have the same problem <laughs> and drive it up here to load this stuff. What a bunch of screwing around, but I don't know what else to do. Oh, you don't know. Hey, I got an idea. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to call up the store and we're going to ask them to deliver the forklift up here to us. Uh, you know, and they'll charge us an extra fee. Okay, so calling the store, asking them to deliver to us. They say, sure, we'll be right up. It'll cost you an extra whatever it's going to cost us. <laughs> okay, um, because I have the wonderful store deliveries mod. So we're going to do shift alt S. There we go. And now if we buy, uh, excuse me, lease the Manitou forklift, it's not actually that much money, but um, I, I don't want to buy it because this might not, we might have the same problem with this. We'll lease it. And it's been delivered for $75 delivery cost. Saves me a heck of a lot of time. I just have to remember to change the star, <laughs> the star point back uh, later. Which I probably won't do. <laughs> Okay, let's see if this one is a little more stable. That seems a little better. Okay. Yeah, this seems to be working better. All right, let's get this uh let's get this metal loaded. we will park the forklift here. Well, no, because we're going to be coming through there with the big truck. Let's park it around back, I suppose. And this will probably just going to stay up here permanently. I don't really want to park it there, though, either, because, again, we might have to come around the corner. Normally you wouldn't park something like this right in front of the loading door, but since we're not actually going to use the loading door, this is where it's going to go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was um, that was a bit of a challenge, man. Uh, I'm and I'm actually well at one time, I'm sure it's expired now, but I, I used to be a, a certified, uh, certified on a forklift. That was many many years ago. So it's not like I don't know what I'm doing, but it just wasn't cooperating very well okay so anyway the plan for up here uh for the future is we're gonna let the iron mine or i'm sorry the the uh, furnace run almost all the way out of ore then we'll come up here we'll have the store deliver us the conveyor system and set it up 
and just have it automatically load the trailer for us and then we're good to go. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to drive uh, this metal down to the roller coaster and drop it off. Um, yeah, so let's just do that next. Let's get it strapped up and take her on down. This might be a little tight getting around here. No, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, we're fine. Oh, no, don't go off there. <laughs> Crap. All right, I'll see you guys at the roller coaster. All righty, we are here. So I think we just pull over here and then it'll all unload. I know we don't have to give all of it to the roller coaster, but... I think I will for now. All right, so we made $48,000 off of that stuff. And why doesn't it show that it's updated? All right, let me get this out of the trigger. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, I did some uh, research, uh, took a look on Reddit, and apparently the production revamp mod was causing problems with roller coaster. But I, but then I looked in Mod Hub, and the author has just recently updated that to fix that problem. So, uh, what we're gonna do is we are going to spawn in nine pallets of metal because that's what I brought over here. So let's get that done first, and then we'll put it in the roller coaster so we get credit for the storage, and then I'll just reset my money back to what it was before that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Now, let's put these over here. See, now we're getting credit because it, sh it shows that the metal is being stored. Okay. So let me move all of these over. And then I'll reset my money to what it was before, you know, the figure that I wrote down just a moment ago. And then we'll be even Steven. I'm glad that the mod author fixed production revamp too, because I really like that mod. I don't, haven't really used it a whole lot in Silver Run yet, because we haven't done a whole lot of productions, but I use it uh, in my normal farming simulator playthrough. Oh, is that all... Is it not going to take anymore? Oh, okay. So there must be like a limit. There must be like a limit to how much it can store at one time. That's what I'm guessing here. Um, all right. So if that's the case... What we're going to do is this only has 16 pieces left so I'm just gonna leave leave that on there well no actually I'm not because it's gonna be in the way next time we come around here it took just about all of this pallet so we'll just assume that it did take it okay so that leaves us five full pallets left so what we're going to need to do with these is, um, okay, I was sent, <laughs> I just got a message from Windows that my recording disk was out of space, so I had to clear, clear some space off of it. Anyway, what I was saying was, just to keep this simple, okay, and, and I'm, I'm talking this through in my own mind as much as, is trying, as I'm trying to explain it to you guys. So we came over here, we sold nine pallets of metal, we got paid for nine pallets of metal. It would be exactly the same as if we had the money part of it, right? would be exactly the same as if we would have taken the nine pallets and sold them somewhere else, aside from whatever price fluctuation there might be. And we're not going to worry about the price fluctuation part of it. That means that I got all of my money for this. Now, had the roller coaster been working, we would have been able to sell 
uh, four pallets to here. It would have gone into storage and we would have been paid for it. And then we would have just taken these other five pallets. Because remember, we're not counting this one. Over somewhere else, sold it and gotten the same money for it. it you know, except for whatever the price fluctuation is. In, in fact, let's just look at that. Even though I'm not going to take that into account because it's too much messing around. Um... So the roller coaster is given five fifty three thirty nine. What I would have done is probably sold the rest to Elm Creek and made a little more money. So I'm to keep this th simple for myself. I'm just going to take the loss. So what we're going to do with these pallets is we're going to delete them because we've effectively already sold them. Okay, and then there's a thousand pieces in each roll. This only has 16 pieces left that isn't worth messing with, so we're going to delete it too. All right, I think that I think the pot's right now. I, th I think that fixes the issue. Um, moving forward, whenever we bring new stuff here, uh, we'll actually be able to store it and, and it'll work. And we got the money for the rest of our iron, and we're good. Other than the fact that I took a little bit of a loss because we, if I would have sold those five pallets to Elm Creek, we would have made a little more money. But it's, I mean, you know. It's okay. It's too hard for me to try and re, re do the math to to set that part of it right. So I'm just gonna go with what we got. All right, my goodness, what a bunch of screwing around, huh? Um, okay, so guys, I think we're gonna wrap up the episode here. Um, it it is the the plan for the next episode is there. There's two things I want to do actually. I want to I want to purchase the sawmill, and then we'll take a load of logs down to the sawmill and get that started get started with the board, you know, plank production and all that sort of thing. And I want to try out the Feller Buncher. Um, I don't think I'm going to like it as much as I like using the Harvester, but I'm going to try it because maybe I will, you know, I might change my mind and I won't really know until I try it. So if you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, we're going to try, we're going to lease this machine here. And what, what you do with this is you drive up to the the tree and you can grab a couple of trees with it and you cut the tree and then you carry the tree back to the landing area and process it in the landing area. Um, again, just in thinking about how that works compared to using a harvester and a yarder, uh, it doesn't seem to me like this is the better way to go. But here again, I want to try it. Maybe I'll like it. Maybe I'll see something about it that I'm currently not seeing. And, you know, it, and even if I don't, at least we can say, hey, we gave this this method of logging a try, too. So um, I'm going to clean up all of the logs that are currently down and get ready for the next, you know, section uh, or session, I should say, of logging. And then we'll try that thing out and give it a, and just see how it works. OK, so that's the plan, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share the video. And by the way. Although it's going to be a few days after the fact when you guys see this video, it is a Thanksgiving day uh, as I'm recording this. And as soon as I'm done recording, I'm going to go into the kitchen and help my wonderful wife uh, finish up Thanksgiving dinner for this evening. So if you celebrate Thanksgiving, have a happy Thanksgiving. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.